Amos chapter 9, last chapter. I saw the Lord standing upon the altar. Now we seem to be back in Jerusalem. We've been in Jerusalem for the last couple chapters. We've been in Israel north. And he said, smite the lintel of the door. That's the top of the door. Hit it. In Exodus, that's one of the three sides they put the blood over the door, not this door. Now, that the post may shake. That, that's a pretty violent smiting for a man. This is not the Lord saying, I'm going to smite the bows. You smite it. Listen, that house, the, the temple was built of stone and cedar and gold and cut them in the head. And that, that's a violent Wound, head, a head wound. All of them. And I will slay the last of them with the sword. <laughs> so those that all that get a head wound, God said, I'll finish them off. He that fleeth gets away. Of them shall not flee away. So you're not. He's going to flee, but he's going. He ain't going anywhere. And he that escapes is of them. He, he gets out. He shall not be delivered. So the thing is, you know, when you escape, you get to an area. Okay, I'm safe. They can't touch me. God says no. Not this time. Though they dig into hell, you dig all the way to the center of the earth. So see, hell is below your feet. You dig to get to hell. This is God speaking. God said there's a hell. He didn't say Hades. He didn't say Shiloh. Gehenna. He said the H E W two fix L that most preachers don't preach about because they don't want to tell you where they're going. Then shall my hand take them. All right, so if you could dig into hell, God said, "I'll reach my hand down. And I'll pull you out." <laughs> now this is all figurative. This is stating the fact is. If you could run away from me, all right, wherever, however you go away from me, you're not getting away from me. God's omnipresent. You cannot play hide and seek with God. Now, just a few moments ago, my daughter's looking for the cat. And our cat can hide good. And you, you shake his streets, he'll come running. You can't hide from God. And in Jeremiah, we read that, you know, God don't see us. Oh, no, yes, he does. <clears throat> well, you know, God sees us in church, but he doesn't see us outside of church. Oh, no, 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 no. Though they climb up to heaven like they did in Babel, in that tower, NASA, they want to put men on, on Mars now. If they do, you say, well, put the men on the moon. I don't believe that. If you put men on Mars, God will see you. You know, we put an Israelite in one of those shuttles, and the shuttle blew up over Texas. I don't think that's where Jews belong.
Thence will I bring them down. And the historical realm to that, though, though we're looking at you know, illustrations here, but the historical fact is the Tower of Babel, God brought them down and dispersed them. And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, might be a good hide, I've never been there. I'll wait till Jesus takes me. I will search and take them out then. So Carmel must be a good place to go hide if God says, I'll, I'll search. But does God really have to search for you? Are you telling me you, you, you can go to a place where, where is he? Adam and Eve hid themselves. Where art thou, Adam? Now, it's not that Adam and Eve found a good hiding place. It's God's like, I know what you did. Why don't you just come out, face me. God wanted, you know, what'd you do, Adam? Like, God didn't know. You, you ate of the tree. God didn't know. Eve, what'd you do? God did. Yes, God. God was trying to get them to come out and repent. I'm sorry, God. I took the fruit, whatever it was, of the tree that you said that did it. We did not call upon you. We listened to that servant. That's what God wanted. I mean, some of these religions, they got these little rooms and closets and and monasteries and you know if we no one's going to see us God see yeah though they hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea a submarine that's why I, I command a serpent and he shall bite them now they made a movie and I was I'm into submarine movies and I they made a submarine movie and there were vipers on that submarine. They went around biting the people. I don't know if they got it from this verse. But that's where a lot of the devil gets his information. He gets it from the Bible. And man makes money off it. And though they go captivity before their enemies, which they're going to, that's why I command the sword. And it shall slay them. So still the ones that go into captivity are going to still die by the sword. The, the Syrians are very cruel, vile people. There is no mercy when it came to the Syrians. And I've heard stories of Attila the Hun. Which, I mean, he's not in the Bible, but just the wickedness of man. I mean, who else but man would say, all right, here's this guillotine. We'll put the guillotine on a cart and we'll drive the cart all over town so we can show people get their heads chopped off. And people go and would cheer it on. The man is just... I will set my eyes upon them for evil, not for good. That's an interesting verse. Because Proverbs said, behold, the eyes of the Lord are not... Are in every place behold the evil and the good. That's interesting. Proverbs 15.3. And Proverbs 15.3 has been written. I don't know if Amos would have a copy of it, but there's scripture with scripture. These are God's people. And God says, you know what? <laughs> evil. For your sins and your iniquity. And the Lord God of hosts, that's all, everything. Angels, planets. Is he that touches the land, and it shall melt. And all that dwell therein shall mourn. Shall raise up holy like a flood. There's that flood we read in chapter 8, verse 8. Flood is judgment. Destruction. 
and shall be drowned as by the floods of Egypt. Now they would understand the floods of Egypt because they're, they're going down to Egypt. It is he that buildeth the stories in heaven. It's the creation of God, the creator. There are stories in heaven. There are three heavens, not seven. And founded his troop in the earth. He called for the waters of the seas. That's all Genesis 1. He pours them out on the face of the earth. That's where the oceans come from. The seas. The lake. The Lord is his name. That's Jehovah. Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me? O children of Israel. Save the Lord. Have not I brought Israel out of the land of Egypt? Yes, you have. And the Philistines. That's the story in life of King Saul and David from Camphor. And the Syrians from Kerr. Yes, you did. Behold, the eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom. There's the eyes of the Lord again. I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. Saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob. So see, God's not all finished with Jacob. Saith the Lord. For lo, I will command, I will shift the house of Israel among all nations. Now that shifting is, you know, this day and age, we don't have all the tools that I grew up as a child. My mom would buy a thing of flour, and we had this, this silver tin thing, and you put the flour in it, and you have to squeeze the handle, and the flour came out at the bottom, and it would break it up, and if there was anything in that flour, it shouldn't be. So what God's going to do, he's going to shake up, he's going to rattle, he's going to roll the world, and where the house of Israel is, he's going to say, okay, come on. Get out of that. Like as corn, wheat, it shifted in the sea. Yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. The, the smallest, the, the most, the poorest, the, the most vilest. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. The wages of sin is death. Which say... All right, so you thought everybody was going to die. The evil shall not overtake us nor prevent it. It ain't going to happen to us. We, it'll happen to us. After all, you know, we're Americans. Nothing's going to touch us. Well, that's what England used to think. Verse 11. In that day, pay attention to that, that's second advent reference. Well, I raise up the tabernacle of the house of David that is fallen, and it's fallen. All the kings are gone. If you are of David, you don't really know. It'll be known during the tribulation period. And of David would be of Judah. And close up the breaches earth, a lot of holes and cracks. And, and I will raise up his ruins. I will build it as the days of old. That's the city. That's the city of David. That's Jerusalem. That's the second advent. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. That's the land. Jacob's brother. Of all the heathen, which are called by my name, by my name, heathen are called. By How are the heathen called by God's name in the tribulation period? They're the ones that help the Jews. 
Listen, there's no salvation in the tribulation period for the Gentiles outside the fact is that you help those Jews and you don't even know you're doing it. Don't go say believe on the Lord Jesus Christ because not only is that for them, but you got to do the, the, the law. The law is back. You know, we, there are people say you're saved by works. You know what you do. That's the tribulation. He endureth to the end shall be saved. When Jesus told that rich and young ruler, you know, sell all you have, give to the poor, take up your cross. That's going to be a tribulation passage. That, that's not the church age. And there'll be some Gentiles that will believe in Christ and they will have to go to the temple and they will have to face the fact is if I bow down to that image, if I worship that mark and beast, I am damned. And I can't survive <laughs> by the skin of your teeth, said Job. Say the Lord that doeth it. Now we're going to get into the millennium. I love this verse. It's weird that it's a verse 13. This is a good 13. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, Jehovah, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper. What's that? You see, when, when we get to the millennium, and I am in the land with my wife and my children, I am going to be putting tomato seeds down. And my wife and my children are going to be picking those tomato plants, the tomatoes bright and red, as I'm still putting the seeds in the ground. And they're going to pick those tomato plants and they're going to get to the, Hey, come on, plant some more plants. We've got, we got all the tomatoes. And they better make sure they get enough pepper. I'm going to need pepper. The, tre the, the treader of grapes. That's the guy that walks on the grapes. That's disgusting to me. You're going to drink something that people have been in. I hope they really respect those feet. So the guy that's walking and, and stomping on the grapes, that soweth the seed. The guy's going to be stomping the grapes, but the grapes are going to be picked and put into the vat while the guy's planting the grapes. <laughs> that's the millennium. And the mountains shall drop sweet wine. There's going to be a lot of grapes and a lot of wine. And now all the hills shall melt. I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel. He's not done with them. This is all millennium. Verses 13 on. Verses 11, 12. Or second advent. They shall build the waste city. So it looks like, it looks like, in verse 11, when Jesus Christ comes back, he rebuilds the city of, of, of David. He rebuilds Zion. He rebuilds Jerusalem. And the millennium, verse 14, the, the Hebrews, the Jews, the Israelites come in and build their city back. An inhabitant, Nehemiah. You know, Ezra went first and built the temple. Nehemiah came in and built the city. It's going to happen again. And they shall plant vineyards. We just read about that. And drink wine thereof. They shall all, and, and listen, the curse is gone, so there will be no intoxicating liquors. And eat the fruit of them, grapes, raisins. I, 
I will plant them upon their land. So that's the United Nations. So that's the Arabians. So that's the PLO. I don't even know if the PLO is still. I don't care about it. And they shall no more be pulled out of their land. Which I gave them. Oh, that's what Say if the Lord thy God, so how do you say that God's all finished with the Jew? You completely wipe out the Old Testament and you don't you do what the Catholics said, don't read that Bible. And they're not they could be, but they're they're not Paul line, you know, only Paul. But that, that's what they would read. But they would read the book of Matthew or the Gospel of Matthew, and they say, That's us Gentiles. That's what the church does. The church goes running to Matthew. That's not our book. You know, the preacher, you know, the soul of the earth. You are, he's not talking to Gentiles. He's not talking. There's no church. Like one pastor talked, You know, there's, there's Christians in the Old Testament. You're full of it. The same thing that the Pope's words are. You're full of bull. I can't say the other word. You do great error when you go to Matthew for church doctrine. You're going to, hey, you're the one's going to be faith. Listen, you can use the stories in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and all. You can use them as illustrations, but don't go say, you know, you are the salt of the earth. Okay, what do you do? You endure to the end. Once saved, always saved. Uh, uh, wait a minute. If you don't endure to the end, teaches you could lose it. And there are churches that teaches you can lose your salvation running to Matthew. And the church today, oh, Jesus told us to say, what, are, what is the time of the end? Oh, there should be earthquakes and divers, rumors of wars and war. And then the Christians, oh, there's earthquakes and there's wars of Ukraine and Jesus is coming. And, oh. Jesus was talking about the second advent, not the rapture. He was talking about the tribulation period. That's what we just read now. I'm telling the church, the teaching of the church today is great sin. Now, now, now there's a difference between illustration. Now, I can teach about the virgins with their oil to a congregation of saved Gentiles or Jews. I can say, you know, you got to be prepared, you got to be ready. The Holy Spirit is the type of the oil. But, friend, when the bridegroom goes into the door and closes the door, if you're the church, you're not going to be left outside that door. Because you are the bride. You're not a... <laughs> but, I mean, they get it all wrong. 